Long-term holders are accumulating Bitcoin, and here is why this is super important. So Bitcoin is not like other commodities. When demand for gold increases or wheat or oil, there can be a supply side response. So if there's a surge in demand for gold, miners can dig for more gold or we can drill for more, more oil. Farmers can plant more wheat crops, right? You can increase supply to match that increase in demand. And when you think about an asset, anytime there's a buyer, there's also a seller. And so if demand increases, supply either has to increase or the price has to get bid up and so, uh, to incentivize some more supply to come into the market. And it's really this simple, right? Demand goes up and supply stays constant. The price has to go up until supply can match that increase in demand. If demand goes up and supply goes up, all right, the price can stay constant. If demand goes down and supply stays constant, price has to go down. If demand goes down and supply goes down, the price can stay constant. But with Bitcoin, there is no supply side response. If demand for Bitcoin increases, even if you plug in more miners, the rate at which more new Bitcoin is produced does not change. And so what has to happen? The demand has to bid the price higher to incentivize people like myself, people like you watching this, to sell their Bitcoin. You have to incentivize holders to part with their coins because there cannot be a supply side response from miners. If we look at this chart, you can see it here. So the orange line is the total circulating supply of Bitcoin. Right now, we're at about 19,800,000. This black line is the hash rate. So this is effectively how many Bitcoin miners are there or how much, what is the, the total computing power of all the Bitcoin miners? As this black line goes up, that's saying, hey, more people are trying to mine Bitcoin or we're more efficient at mining Bitcoin. In theory, production of Bitcoin should go up, right? If you imagine gold, if more people start mining gold or if we become more efficient at mining gold, you would think the supply, the rate at which we mine new gold would increase and it would, but that's not the case for Bitcoin. This green line here is the amount of new Bitcoin that are mined every day. Every four years, it's cut in half. And even as this black line goes up, there's no change to the green line. There, you know, you're not mining more Bitcoin at a faster rate. And over time, the amount of Bitcoin that gets mined is trending towards zero. So let's go back to this chart here with the long-term holder supply, because this is what we're looking at. This is what's super important. As demand for Bitcoin increases, whether that's because Bitcoin ETFs got launched and a new pool of capital can find its way into Bitcoin, or a strategic reserve gets passed and nation states start mining Bitcoin, or a pro-Bitcoin president wins an election and demand increases in anticipation of a strategic Bitcoin reserve. There's lots of things that can change demand for Bitcoin. So what has to happen to the price? Well, if you can't have a supply side response, then the new demand has to bid the price higher to incentivize people that are holding Bitcoin to sell that Bitcoin. And what we're looking at here in this orange line is the long-term holder supply. So people that have, or addresses on chain, I should that have held Bitcoin for at least six months or longer. This is a you know, key statistical measure. Once a coin's been held for at least six months, the chances of it being sold drop significantly. And you can see what happens over time here in uh, Q1 of 2024, the Bitcoin price was bid higher and some of these long-term holders distributed coins into the market. So if you look at this red area here, that's we're looking at the seven-day distribution of coins into the market. So over a, a week's time period, how many coins did long-term holders move on chain to sell? And you could see there was, of course, as the price got bid higher, some long-term holders parted with their coins. This makes sense, right? Because what happened in Q, uh, Q1 of 2024, Bitcoin went back to its all-time highs. So in 2021, it hit $69,000 a coin went down over the last two and a half years. But then in 2024, we reached that price again. So it makes sense that some people who bought the top in 2021 were willing to sell coins as the price hit that measure uh, again in 2024. Then throughout the summer of 2024, we saw these long-term holders begin to reaccumulate Bitcoin. So whether, you know, maybe it's short-term holders that bought in 2024 Q1 become long-term holders because they've held those coins, or we're just seeing long-term holders be in net accumulation, uh, existing long-term holders. But then ultimately what happened in Q4? The price bid higher and long-term holders parted with their coins. So now we're looking at roughly 13 million 
Bitcoin belonging to long-term holders. So that's 13 million coins have not moved in at least six months. But what we're seeing here again is that distribution is over. So the, the long-term holders that were saying, hey, I'll sell my coins at 80K, 85K, 90K, 95, 100. There was certainly, you know, we, we saw long-term holder supply drop from 14 million to 13 million. So 1 million coins were willing to be sold at 100K. But now we're seeing reaccumulation. So the amount of supply that could come from long-term holders at 100K appears to be over, right? We appear to have hit that threshold. And so without long-term holders distributing coins in the market, as demand increases, price is going to have to get bid higher. It's going to have to get bid to another level. So this is a, a key thing we're looking at. I mean, you can see here in 2024, once the long-term holders stopped selling and started accumulating, we were able to hit this floor. Bitcoin consolidated in this range. And then once we saw this aggressive accumulation in, in Q3 right here in you know July, August, September, we saw aggressive accumulation from long-term holders. Long-term holder supply went up. And then ultimately, new demand came into the market after Trump won the election. And the price had to get bid higher. That's, that's what has to happen. And so we're starting to see, again, accumulation from long-term holders. Now, this accumulation could happen. We could be consolidating here for month, two months, three months, four months, five months, right? But as these holders continue to accumulate, once the next surge in demand comes into the market, price has to go up. 